Thank you, thank you so much. Never, never, never gonna let you down. Never. Always gonna build you up. That's what we do here at ICBA. We will always have your back. Always have your back. And that's what I'm out here to talk about today. Because that's a principle that means a lot to this organization. And it's one that means a lot to me personally. You know, I learned the true meaning of that term as a cadet at the Virginia Military Institute. Now at VMI, especially during our rat year, we absolutely had to rely on one another, on post and off. We needed each other as much on a Friday night uptown, sometimes even more, than we did on a difficult military maneuver. You know, I, I think that's why community banking resonates with me so much, because in our communities, we rely on each other in the off hours as much as we do during the business day. Community bankers aren't just there for our customers from nine to five weekdays. We are there every day, all day if we want our communities to thrive. And you know, that's as true in Jefferson City, Missouri, as it is in Coldwater, Ohio, or Taos, New Mexico, or any of the other towns and cities served by the men and women in this room. Just as you have the back of all those in your hometowns, ICBA has your back. So here we are in New Orleans, and this historic city, as with much of the rest of our country, was purchased under the leadership of a Virginian with the promise that all are created equal. But with all due respect to Thomas Jefferson, this is certainly not true of banks. All banks are not created equal. All banks are not the same. A, uh, a one or two story community bank building is nothing like a towering skyscraper in New York or Charlotte or San Francisco. These are obviously different buildings. And so are the banks that are housed within. Now can you relate to the kinds of institutions that developed the toxic mortgage-backed securities? the credit default swaps and synthetic derivatives that tanked our economy? Can you fathom a $6 billion loss like that of the London whale, or rigging the LIBOR rate, or the commodities markets, or laundering money for groups with ties to terrorists in Iran and Syria? No, you can't because that's not what you do. Our business model looks nothing like that. So we shouldn't be sucked into believing that all banks, Wall Street and Main Street alike, are somehow the same, joined at the hip. It's nonsense. Look, we certainly aren't equal in the eyes of bank regulators and those who are entrusted to enforce laws and regulations. While ICBA has spearheaded a successful push for tiered regulation in which banking rules are designed to be proportionate to size and risk, the fact remains that the largest and riskiest financial firms still enjoy preferential treatment in so many respects. For example, while the largest U.S. banks have paid more than 200 billion dollars in fines, that's billions of dollars in fines since 2009, not a single CEO, senior executive, or director has been held accountable for the bank's transgressions, not even when they pled criminally guilty. And these are individuals who, in some cases, knowingly violated laws and regulations because it was so profitable. The former Attorney General himself testified to the United States Senate 
that the Justice Department has hesitated to pursue financial wrongdoing at the largest banks because of the potential economic impact. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, there are some in banking who are just too big to jail. They are above the law. By contrast, community bank officers and directors are sometimes frog walked to the courthouse by regulators and law enforcers, even for relatively minor violations. Why? Because we're not big enough and rich enough to merit preferential treatment. Do you all remember Orwell's book, Animal Farm? In the beginning, all animals were equal. But then, over time, certain animals became more equal than others. Well, this Orwellian view of power, superseding equal treatment and equal justice, is sadly a reality in our banking system today. No, all banks are not created equal. Some, in fact, are treated more equally than others when it comes to the enforcement of our laws and the meeting out of justice. Now look, there is nothing inherently wrong with being big, just as there is nothing wrong with being a community bank. But we are talking about two fundamentally different business models, requiring fundamentally distinct representation. Let me ask, how many of you bank presidents out there have personally made a business or individual loan? Let me see a show of hands. You've personally made a business or personal loan. Look at that. You handled the meeting with the borrower. You approved the loan. You sent the wire transfer. You brought the credit slip to the teller window. And many of you still do. You do that every day. Now, do you think the mega bank CEOs do that? Do you think uh, Jamie Dimon or Lloyd Blankfein sit at a desk out in the lobby and do that? <laughs> no, that's not in their job description. But it is in yours. It is what community banks do. Now, this doesn't necessarily make bank, mega bank executives bad people. It doesn't make Wall Street wrong and Main Street right. I mean, for heaven's sakes, there are plenty of other reasons for that. I just mean that we are different breeds. We're different animals. We have distinct priorities with our own needs and burdens and customer bases. Our income streams are different. How we operate on a daily basis is different. In fact, about the only thing we have in common with the mega banks is simply the word bank. Beyond that, we diverge sharply in so many ways. Now, there are some in Washington who would love for people to believe that all banks are the same just as some marketers want everyone to believe that all tissues are Kleenex and that all copy machines are Xerox. Our industry, the community banking industry, cannot allow the biggest and riskiest financial firms to drag our reputations down with them. We must not allow, thank you, we must not allow them to compromise the positive image that community banks have earned. We cannot allow them to dilute our brand. You know, I get troubled when some members of the banking industry say that banks have a reputation problem. Yes, yes, the mega banks do have a reputation problem. The too big to fail Wall Street institutions that wrecked our financial system and economy have a reputation problem. But community banks 
are held in high regard among policymakers and the general public alike. Survey after survey shows that. We cannot and should not be lumped together with those megabanks whose past and continuing bad acts sully the good name of banking. We must defend and promote the community bank brand proudly because nobody else is going to do it for us. Certainly not Wall Street. So let's all stop pretending that all banks are one and the same. Let's stop saying that we are all one big happy kumbaya family. Listen, when someone asks if you're a banker, I want you to stand proud and say, I'm a community banker. If someone asks if you work in a bank, I want you to say, yes, I work in a community bank. Community banks have a unique business model, one that requires doing right by our customers. Because you are one of a kind, because you are unique, you deserve unique representation, which is why ICBA is here. At ICBA, we, work, we give voice to and we work for community banks every day. That's our job description, to focus exclusively on you. We have only one mission to create and promote an environment where community banks flourish. We are not divided in our attention or our loyalties. If your best interests conflict with that of the megabanks, non-financial bank firms, or others, there's no conflict for us. We don't equivocate, we don't waffle. We have but one client. You, all of you, and we're the only trade association at the national level that can say that. We don't have to keep one eye on any other constituency, and that's precisely why we've had so much success. ICBA and the community bank advocates in this room and across the country have harnessed the industry's reputation to achieve numerous policy victories in the past year. Through our reputation and persistent grassroots advocacy, community bankers successfully advanced a variety of industry initiatives in Congress and at the regulatory agencies since we met last in Orlando. And that starts with regulatory relief. ICBA's comprehensive plan for prosperity made considerable progress with provisions allowing more banks to qualify as rural mortgage lenders, eliminating redundant privacy notice requirements, and expanding eligibility for the 18-month exam cycle, all signed into law as part of the highway bill. Yes. The highway bill. You heard me correctly. This year, we ended up knee-deep in the highway bill. Why? Because Congress needed money for roads, and it wasn't going to raise taxes to get it. So some in Congress sought the money by taking it from the Federal Reserve stock dividend paid to Fed member banks. And believe it or not, this proposal actually passed the United States Senate. Absolutely terrible public policy. And ICBA fought it tooth and nail with the strong help of nearly everybody in this room. Now, ultimately, an exemption was included in the bill that preserved the dividend for 1,830 member banks. This exemption saves the bulk of Fed member banks approximately $200 million per year. And lawmakers also softened the blow on the very largest Fed member banks 
by tying the dividend to the 10-year Treasury note instead of just cutting the 6% dividend to a flat 1.5%. And in addition to that, we also got lawmakers to restore funds cut from the federal crop insurance program and drop ICBA-opposed language that would have extended higher Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac guarantee fees. So I guess you could say we made lemonade out of lemons in a very, very tough situation. And then, of course, there was the omnibus bill. While the omnibus bill was disappointing overall, we did manage to include in the bill the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act and provisions to require a study on the effect of Basel III on community banks and an increase in funding for the SBA 7A loan program. Now, the highway bill and the omnibus bill are prime examples of why we must stay vigilant on Capitol Hill. Because you know, you know, you never know what Congress is gonna try to slip by you. And you never know when and where you're going to have an opportunity to slip something into moving legislation. And listen, all of that comes on top of this year's CFPB final rule broadening small creditor and rural designations that will allow more community banks to receive qualified mortgage protections for portfolio loans. And of course, we can't forget efforts to reform the call report. And that's a policy, ladies and gentlemen, an initiative that was begun and spearheaded by ICBA. The only reason this call report thing's going on is because there's an ICBA and they heard from you. They heard from the community bankers. And on another issue that's similar, I must comment on FASB's misguided current expected credit loss model, or CECL. CECL, can you believe that? CECL. Thanks exclusively to ICBA, this accounting fiction has been exposed for the destructive proposal that it is. Following intense advocacy, FASB met directly with ICBA and a delegation of community bankers over our concerns that Cecil will force community bankers to record a provision for loan losses the moment any loan, any loan, is made. FASB, thankfully, has agreed to delay the implementation period for community banks. But we're not going to stop until the FASB board and federal regulators mitigate the impact of this proposal on community banks. We will not stop. Thank you. Look, I could go on and on. I haven't even touched on the tax-exempt credit unions and the farm credit system that are hell-bent on expanding into every facet of banking without being subject to taxes. Heck, they, they're not going to be satisfied until they serve all air-breathing mammals on the planet. You know, it's, it's a constant battle, one that is fought day in and day out in Washington. But you know, the good news is this, that more often than not, our hard work pays off. Without ICBA, FDIC assessment premiums would be 30 to 50% higher today, and deposit insurance would still be limited to $100,000. Community banks wouldn't have a permanent seat on the Federal Reserve Board, and we'd be subject to the full force and weight of Basel III. And of course, there would be no such thing as tiered or proportional regulation. But much hard work remains. We have to keep fighting the good fight, because community banks are unique. We will always have to fight twice as hard as the Wall Street megabanks to get a seat at the policy table. But you know, we have shown time and time again that we can accomplish what we set out to do. And you know why? 
because the people in this room, all of you, understand that each of us is essential to the other. We have to watch out for each other. We can't let each other down. We have to have each other's back. And ICBA will always have your back. We will always be there, committed to you. And just like those cadets in Lexington, Virginia, ICBA will never give up, will never say die, because we know who we fight for. We know what is at stake, and we will never, ever let you down. Thank you so much, community bankers. Appreciate it so much. Thank you.